Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is another Dreams tutorial. Uh, last time I showed you a lever contraption in which our puppet could go over to it and interact with it and turn things on and off. Uh, also put that in a door and so you could open a door, open and shut a door. Um, now in that tutorial we built our objects so that there were trigger zones and controlled sensors inside the object. Now this is fine if you've only got like one or two of these things in your level. Well, what if you've got hundreds of interactable objects in your level? It's not particularly efficient to have tons of trigger zones all over the place and loads of controller sensors. It makes more sense to put all of that inside your puppet. So instead of the object detecting the puppet, the puppet will detect the object. So how are we going to do that? Well, I have built Um, I have built a uh, just that and so here we have our lever and we have our door whoops here we go and I've also put in a signpost which has a sign on it and I've also put a pickup object that you can pick up and as you can see my object has gone over there now obviously uh, if you were building uh, an inventory, uh, you wouldn't have that in full view of the player. You'd put that under the ground or uh, in, inside something so that you can't see it. Uh, that's just moving our objects uh, away into an inventory area, like so. Right, let's have a look at the brains and see what I have done. Okie dokie, let's go into our puppet. Okay, so... First thing things I did is I stuck a trigger zone onto my puppet's chest. And I have this large square trigger zone here. So any interactable object um, that falls within this area is going to be detected by my puppet. And if I go into the interact brain, like this, I keep saying brain, interact tweak menu, um, then you can see that what it's going to detect is a label. What it's looking for is on this page. What I'm looking for is a visible object, collidable object that is got this label object or this label machine. So what I've decided is I've got two different types of object uh, that my player can interact with. He can interact with an object that he can pick up or a machine which will have some sort of action attached to it. So this is going to detect either of those two things with that trigger zone. Now, because um, uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit awkward to wire things backwards and forwards to my puppet, um, I've, I've created a node. So let's go into controller logic. Let's open that up. This is where our controller is, and this is where we're going to put our code. Right, our gadgets. Now then, uh, I've wired up a node from uh, the detected on, the, on our trigger zone into here and I've called that interact detected. So this is just acting as if I'd stamp this into the into the controller logic brain but because I want it, this to um, move with the uh, player and not be just in the world here uh, I've had to attach it to the player so it's easier actually just to stick uh, a node onto our microchip so we can wire everything to this. Um, rather than wiring it backwards and forwards to the puppet. Right. Now then. This is going to act the same way as we did before. So if you haven't done that lever tutorial, I suggest uh, you have a quick look at that. Um, so you see how we uh, did um, our trigger zones and our controller sensors in there. Because um, it's the same principle for this. So I've got my AND gate. This AND gate I've called action and this AND gate I've called pick up. So this AND gate here is taking whether or not an object has been detected and whether or not you've pressed the triangle button. If that's true, if both those things are true, it's then going to send a signal to this transmitter for it to transmit. This signal is called action. Now this isn't um, neat coding, this is an important thing. 
the name of this transmitter is important because this is what is used uh, by the other gadget to identify which receiver to talk to. So um, make sure these are spelt correctly and um, and they're unique uh, because we're going to be uh, using these names in our receivers. So this is this is sending a signal to the receiver once you've pressed that button. And we've got another one here, which is pick up, which is connected to the square. So that I've got two different options uh, for an object, whether or not you press the square button or the triangle button. And this has created a, uh, a signal to a transmitter called pick up. This node is also connected to uh, a display uh, signal. Uh, so that's uh, going to activate. Uh, it doesn't need a button press. That's just going to activate as soon as it uh, detects an interactable object. And that's what's in the puppet. Quite simple, really. So I think you're panicking because we're using um, signals and transmitters, but they're, they're pretty straightforward, uh, which you get used to using them. OK, so we've we've got our puppet, and that's all the code. Let's have a look at one of our objects then. Here's our microchip for our lever. Let's zoom in on that. Woo! Now, if you remember rightly uh, from our lever before, we had um, a trigger zone and a contra uh, controller sensor and an AND gate. So those have been removed, and instead we've now got a receiver, wireless receiver for display, and a wireless receiver for action. So inside our wireless receiver, let's open that up. Okay, so we have typed in or if you press down on the D-pad, it gives you the options of all the transmitters available, all the transmission names. So we want display for that one. Um, so we've got display. And um, as you can see, there is a trigger zone attached to our wireless receiver. Now you put that in front of it. This is where um, the player needs to be standing for it to uh, send that transmitter signal. It's only going to pick up the transmitter signal uh, if it's inside this box. And because it's inside our player, it's the same as the trigger zone as before. So um, here we have our trigger zone. So if the, if the puppet is standing in this and it's transmitting a signal, uh, then uh, this is going to be activated. And um, we've got signal here. And we've connected that signal wire into our text displayer. So this is working exactly the same like like um like the trigger zone was. So from display to our display. Now this one is our action button. So this is detecting whether or not we've pressed the button. And that's gone into our selector with our sound and our keyframe and our port for turning things on. There we go. So if you haven't seen the, the lever tutorial, do do have a look at that first before you do this. Um, it would help you understand um, what this is actually doing a little bit easier. And you can check out all of tutorials from, um, from various people, various YouTubers. And I'd like to thank uh, Zachary, uh, a YouTuber who made a tutorial on picking things up, uh, which has given me the idea uh, to improve our interactive objects uh, mechanic here by using uh, signals and uh, transmitters so uh, thanks to Zachary uh, for, for his tutorial which uh, I ex expanded on here today right um, okay so that's our lever contraption and we've done the same with the door um, and this is our signpost. Now for our signpost, we don't need uh, an action. We're just interested in the display. So as soon as it's displayed, it's going to send um, a signal to the text display. So there we go. So it said, read sign. We don't need that. Now this is our pickup object. Let's have a look at this microchip. So for our pickup object, um, we've got display the same. Except is this time we're going to be displaying a uh, square. And we're now looking for pickup, which is looking for a press on the square. Uh, we've got a sound effect. And we've got a counter. And we've got um, 
a teleport to our inventory area. So all this does, let's open that up. All this does is find the tag called inventory and moves our object to it. So there's our tag over there. You can see it there. I've named it inventory. And uh, as soon as you uh, pick up your scroll, it's uh, going to move into the inventory there. So you can do, uh, so we're doing this so that later on when we worked out a mechanic for um, dropping things, uh, you'll be able to uh, drop your scroll uh, because it still exists. We're not going to destroy it. Now, the other way of picking up an object, obviously, is to uh, destroy that object and um, have a microchip where um, objects are, um, we just have counters that say you picked it up. But uh, I'm, I'm deciding to uh, just physically move the object into an inventory area. Uh, I think it makes a little bit more sense and makes it easier for us. Now this counter is just um, is just saying we've collected the scroll. So if uh, we receive a, a message that we've picked it up, we've pressed the button, uh, we've teleported it and we've turned this counter on to say we've picked it up. That might be important. Let's say if this was a key, uh, we would need to detect for this door, for example. Let's let's do that. Let's let's um, let's just do that. So this door will only open. I'm gonna find the microchip for this door now. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't find it. Where's it gone? Uh, hang on. Have we not got it we have not uh, there we go there we go right so this is our microchip for our scroll and this is the microchip for our door there we go opened it up so i've got drift right okay now at the moment it's only interested in um whether or not all of this is uh, is taking place. But we want to put in an AND gate because we don't want to wire straight in. Um, so we're going to take that wire out and that wire out. And we're going to send our signal into this AND gate put our AND gate into into there and into there and now we're going to wire this scroll collected counter full into our AND gate into input B so now it's looking to see if we've picked up the scroll and then it will open the door so let's see that in action So I'm trying to open the door and it does not want to know. Nope, that's not working. Let's pick up our scroll. We've now picked up our scroll and now we'll go to the door and now we can open the door. There we go. That's a nice little bit of interaction. So there you go. That's how you build that's how you build uh, the start of uh, an inventory system, a key, and an interact system that sat in the puppet to make it a little bit more efficient. There we go. Uh, we can expand on that on future lessons, I'm sure. So if anything you actually want me to try and do with this, um, I think we're going to have to start thinking about um, how to drop our object once we picked it up. I might be looking at that next. Um, and we'll expand on this inventory system and, and get things uh, uh, working so that we can expand and expand and expand. But if there's anything else that you'd uh, like me to tackle, um, I can't guarantee that I'll know how to do it, um, but if it's something that I can work out, then obviously I will be doing a tutorial. So don't be frightened to ask, um, but don't be disappointed if I can't do it. Um, I am learning exactly the same as you are. So uh, thanks for watching. And I hope that was useful and I'll catch you in your dreams.